I went to one of Buckingham Palace at the livery service and the protocol. <laughs> Not a laugh all in. In the 1960s, America was filled with turmoil and change. The Beverly Hillbillies offered a breath of fresh air with its simple, light-hearted entertainment, focusing on the humorous culture clash of a rural family striking it rich and moving to Beverly Hills. This popular show, with its relatable characters and homely values, provided a comforting escape for many, making it a big hit during a complex time in history. I can't fight a woman's tears. We'll stay here until you marry, Mr. Brewster. Yeah, Ma, and, and I'll be your best man. <laughs> The Beverly Hillbillies, a popular 1962 TV series, featured a unique blend of comedy and drama, but it wasn't without its share of political tension. The show's two main stars, Buddy Epson and Nancy Colt, had political differences that sometimes spilled over onto the set. Buddy Epson, who played the role of Jed Clampett, was known for his conservative political views. On the other hand, Nancy Colt, who played the part of Miss Jane Hathaway, was a liberal Democrat. Despite their political differences, the two actors managed to maintain a professional relationship and continued to work together throughout the show's nine-season run. After the show ended, Nancy Culp decided to pursue a career in politics. She ran for Congress in Pennsylvania in the mid-1980s, but was ultimately unsuccessful in her bid for office. Nevertheless, her decision to run for public office was a testament to her strong political beliefs and her desire to make a difference in the world. In conclusion, while The Beverly Hillbillies was a beloved TV series that brought laughter to millions of viewers, it was also a reflection of the political tensions that existed in America during the 1960s. The show's two main stars, Buddy Epson and Nancy Culp, may have had different political views, but they were able to set aside their differences and work together to create a memorable and enduring television program. Nancy Culp's later decision to run for Congress in Pennsylvania further highlighted the political tensions of the time and her commitment to making a difference in the world. Supervisor speaking. May I help you? Well, thank you, ma'am. This here is Jed Clampett. I'd like to buy some... Buddy Epson, known for his role as the patriarch of the Clampett family in the popular 1962 TV series The Beverly Hillbillies, had a history of opposition towards his co-star Nancy Culp's political ambitions. Culp, who played the role of the family's accountant managing their fortune, ran for Congress in 1984, and Epson made it a point to publicly oppose her campaign. In The Beverly Hillbillies, Epson portrayed Jed Clampett, a wealthy hillbilly who struck oil and moved his family to Beverly Hills. Culp, on the other hand, played Jane Hathaway, the sophisticated and educated accountant who managed the Clampett family's fortune. Despite their contrasting characters, both actors shared a strong on-screen chemistry, making their pairing a fan favorite. However, behind the scenes, Epson and Culp had different political beliefs, which came to a head when Culp decided to run for Congress. Epson, who opposed Culp's campaign, was vocal about his stance, making headlines for his efforts to stop her. Overall, The Beverly Hillbillies was a beloved TV series that showcased the comedic talents of Buddy Epson and Nancy Culp, despite their political differences. The show's success can be attributed to the excellent chemistry between the two actors who brought their characters to life in a way that resonated with audiences. We know. We'll be happy to come, just say when. I reckon the sooner the better. How about tonight? The Beverly Hillbillies, a popular 1962 TV series, featured Buddy Epson as Jed Clampett and Nancy Culp as Jane Hathaway. While the show itself didn't delve into political debates, Buddy and Nancy had frequent political arguments off screen. Buddy was a conservative Republican, while Nancy identified as a liberal Democrat. Their political disagreements often led to heated shouting matches. Their feud was reignited in the mid-1980s when Nancy ran for Congress as a Democrat in Pennsylvania. Buddy, still a conservative Republican, opposed her candidacy. This political rivalry between the two actors added an interesting dynamic to their off-screen relationship, despite their friendly on-screen chemistry. Buddy Epson's conservative views were well known, and he wasn't shy about expressing his opinions. Nancy Culp, on the other hand, was a strong advocate for liberal policies and actively campaigned for Democratic candidates. Their political beliefs were deeply ingrained and their disagreements reflected the broader political landscape of the time. 
despite their political differences. Buddy and Nancy maintained a professional relationship while working together on the Beverly Hillbillies. Their ability to set aside their disagreements and collaborate on the show is a testament to their dedication to their craft and their respect for each other as actors. The mid-1980s feud between Buddy and Nancy was a notable moment in the history of the Beverly Hillbillies. It highlighted the political tensions of the time and demonstrated the depth of their political beliefs. Although they were on opposite sides of the political spectrum, their respect for each other's opinions and their ability to work together speaks to their professionalism and dedication to their craft. No way of thinking. That's a great gesture. Man's gonna want him to tote that soap in before it rains. He's gone to Dr. Twan. In the 1962 election, Nancy Culp, an actress known for her role in the Beverly Hillbillies, ran for Congress against Republican Congressman E.G. Schuster. This bid proved to be particularly challenging for Culp due to Schuster's established political career. Unfortunately, Nancy Culp did not emerge victorious in the election. Buddy Epson, her co-star in the Beverly Hillbillies, played a significant role in her defeat. Epson, who portrayed the character of Jed Clampett in the show, actively opposed Culp's campaign. To further bolster Schuster's campaign, Buddy Epson filmed both television and radio commercials in which he endorsed and campaigned for E.G. Schuster. These commercials were broadcasted widely, reaching a substantial audience, and ultimately contributed to Culp's defeat in the election. In essence, Buddy Epson's involvement in the campaign and his endorsement of E.G. Schuster proved to be a crucial factor in Nancy Culp's failed bid for Congress in 1962. Come in today and be sick tomorrow? <laughs> 103 fever. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll turn... Nancy, a key figure in the 1962 TV series, The Beverly Hillbillies, faced significant challenges during her campaign. She was deeply hurt by Buddy's actions, which she perceived as petty and uncalled for. This betrayal took a toll on her, making it difficult for her to focus on her campaign. Nancy also struggled to secure celebrity endorsements, a crucial aspect of her campaign strategy. Buddy's influential connections made it challenging for her to find supporters who could counteract his influence. This lack of star power further weakened her position and limited her ability to connect with the public. In addition to these challenges, Nancy struggled to raise funds effectively. Her opponents, including Buddy, had more financial resources, which they used to promote their campaigns and reach a wider audience. This financial disadvantage made it difficult for Nancy to compete and get her message across to potential voters. The state's conservatism was another significant factor in Nancy's loss. The political climate at the time was not favorable to her progressive ideas and values. This ideological divide made it challenging for her to gain support from conservative voters who formed a large portion of the electorate. Overall, Nancy's campaign was plagued by numerous challenges, including Buddy's petty actions, her inability to secure celebrity endorsements, her difficulty in fundraising, and the state's conservatism. These factors combined to make her campaign an uphill battle, ultimately leading to her loss. Nancy Culp who played the character of Miss Jane Hathaway in the 1962 TV series, The Beverly Hillbillies, passed away in 1991. After her time on the show, Culp ran for Congress in 1984, but her political bid was unsuccessful. In the years following her defeat, Culp mentioned that she and her co-star buddy Epson, who played the role of Jed Clampett, had resolved their differences. It is worth noting that Buddy Epson never publicly addressed their relationship before his death in 23. Despite any issues that may have arisen between them during the filming of the Beverly Hillbillies, it appears that they were able to move past them in the years after the show ended. The relationship between Culp and Epson remains a topic of interest for fans of the Beverly Hillbillies, and their ability to reconcile is a testament to the enduring appeal of the show and the characters that brought it to life. <laughs> well, I hardly think there'd be anything wrong with that. Hey, Miss Brewster, that you had any fur? In the 1962 TV series, The Beverly Hillbillies, both Buddy Epson and Nancy Culp had naval officer backgrounds before transitioning to entertainment careers. Notably, Buddy Epson, who played the role of Jed Clampett, postponed his retirement to join the show. This decision led to significant character adjustments in Jed Clampett, 
making him more intelligent and politically inclined, which appealed to a blue-collar audience. Buddy Epson's influence on the character of Jed Clampett was substantial. Before his acting career, Epson had served as a naval officer, which gave him a unique perspective on life. When he joined the Beverly Hillbillies, he brought his own political leanings and life experiences to the character, resulting in a more intelligent and politically aware Jed Clampett. Epson's portrayal of Jed Clampett was a departure from the original concept of the character. The show's creators had initially envisioned Jed Clampett as a stereotypical hillbilly, uneducated and unsophisticated. However, Buddy Epson's interpretation of the character was different. He brought a level of intelligence and political awareness to Jed Clampett that resonated with a blue-collar audience. Buddy Epson's influence on the character of Jed Clampett was a deliberate choice. He wanted to create a character that was relatable to a broad audience, including those who might not typically watch a show about hillbillies. By making Jed Clampett more intelligent, and politically aware, Epson was able to appeal to a blue-collar audience that might have otherwise dismissed the show as unrelatable. In conclusion, Buddy Epson's naval officer background and decision to postpone his retirement to join the Beverly Hillbillies had a significant impact on the character of Jed Clampett. His influence resulted in a more intelligent and politically aware Jed Clampett, which appealed to a blue-collar audience and set the show apart from other similar programs. Drunkenest woman you ever saw. Don't <laughs> send her to the farm. In the popular 1962 TV series, The Beverly Hillbillies, actress Irene Ryan, who played Granny, was known for her authenticity in her role. She would actually hit Max Bergiar, who played Jethro, during their scenes together. This created a sense of realism that added to the show's appeal. Years after the show ended, a political feud between two of the show's stars, Buddy Epson and Nancy Culp, was reignited during Nancy's congressional campaign in the mid-1980s. The two had previously had a disagreement during their time on the show, and their animosity was still present decades later. Despite their differences, the Beverly Hillbillies remains a beloved classic, with fans continuing to enjoy the show's humor and memorable characters. The on-screen relationship between Granny and Jethro, as well as the off-screen feud between Epson and Culp, have become enduring aspects of the show's legacy. Before shows like All in the Family, Roseanne, and Married with Children, there was the Beverly Hillbillies. Hollywood found it could be profitable by turning family values on their head. Unlike the wholesome family life depicted in 1950s shows like Father Knows Best, The Andy Griffith Show, Leave it to Beaver, and Ozzie and Harriet, the Beverly Hillbillies offered a different perspective, and it became a success. The plot is straightforward country bumpkin Jed Clampett, played by Buddy Epson, strikes oil, and moves his family to Beverly Hills, where they continue living like they did back home. The humor stems from their interactions with the high society of Beverly Hills. Granny, portrayed by Irene Ryan, is full of superstitions. Ellie Meek, played by Donna Douglas, is overly kind. Jethro, played by Max Baer, is proudly ignorant. Boasting a sixth grade educated brain, these characters constantly clash with the greedy banker Milburn Drysdale, played by Raymond Bailey, and his sassy secretary Jane Hathaway, portrayed by Nancy Cole. The Beverly Hillbillies has truly stood the test of time, always finding a way to make audiences laugh. Some might compare it to Green Acres, but many believe that while the Beverly Hillbillies is a timeless classic, Green Acres does not hold the same quality. The unique charm and humor of the Beverly Hillbillies have ensured its place in television history. In the early 1960s, the casting process for the Beverly Hillbillies brought together a group of talented actors who would become memorable characters. The show's producers, Paul Henning and Roy Huggins, sought to create a unique blend of humor and culture clash. For the role of Jed Clampett, the family patriarch, they chose Buddy Ebsonator Ebson was already an experienced actor and dancer, having appeared in films like Breakfast at Tiffany's. His down-to-earth charm and authenticity made him a perfect fit for Jed. Max Bear Jr. was cast as Jed's son, Jethro Bodine. Bear's comedic timing and physicality were ideal for the role of the lovable, slow-witted cousin. He brought a warmth and humor that endeared Jethro to audiences. Donna Douglas was chosen to play Ellie Mae Clampett, Jed's daughter. 
Douglas's natural beauty, and wholesome demeanor made her a perfect fit for the role of the naive, animal-loving Ellie Mae. Rounding out the main cast was Irene Ryan as Granny, Jed's mother-in-law. Ryan's extensive background in vaudeville and radio brought a unique energy to the character, making Granny a fan favorite. The casting process involved auditions and chemistry tests to ensure the right fit for each role. For instance, Epson and Douglas had an instant rapport, which helped establish the genuine father-daughter relationship on screen. Similarly, Bear and Ryan's comedic chemistry was undeniable, adding to the show's humor. One pivotal moment in the casting process was when Epson, during a read-through, ad-libbed a line that made the producers laugh. This moment showcased Epson's ability to bring authentic humor to the role, solidifying his casting as Jed. In the end, the cast of the Beverly Hillbillies was a perfect blend of talent, humor, and chemistry, creating a show that would become a classic of 1960s television. Margaret, I'm so glad. The Beverly Hillbillies, a popular 1962 TV series, was directed by Paul Henning. Henning's approach to directing was characterized by his ability to bring out the humor in everyday situations, which was instrumental in shaping the show's comedic tone. He was influenced by the classic comedies of the time and drew inspiration from the rich tradition of American vaudeville. Henning's directorial style was marked by a keen eye for visual gags and a talent for pacing. He knew how to build a joke and when to deliver the punchline, which kept audiences engaged and entertained. He also had a knack for casting, as evidenced by the show's iconic characters, Jed Clampett, Granny, Ellie Mae, and Jethro. In bringing the Beverly Hillbillies to life, Henning collaborated closely with the cast and crew. He worked closely with the writers to develop the show's scripts, ensuring that the humor was both accessible and relatable. He also worked closely with the actors, helping them to develop their characters and find their comedic timing. Henning's approach to directing was hands-on and collaborative. He encouraged input from all members of the cast and crew, which helped to create a positive and productive working environment. This collaborative spirit was instrumental in the show's success as it allowed for a seamless blending of talents and perspectives. In conclusion, Paul Henning's directorial vision was instrumental in shaping the Beverly Hillbillies into the beloved TV series that it became. His comedic sensibilities, visual style, and collaborative approach helped to bring the show's characters and stories to life in a way that resonated with audiences. The Beverly Hillbillies, a popular 1962 TV series, was filmed primarily in Hollywood, despite its misleading title. The show set design was quite innovative for its time, with the construction of a sprawling mansion interior and a detailed outdoor scene depicting the Clampett's backyard pool, all built on the back lot of CBS Studio Center. The show's creators, Paul Henning and his team, faced logistical challenges in filming especially when it came to managing the large cast and crew, as well as coordinating the complex special effects required for the slapstick humor. To overcome these challenges, they implemented meticulous planning, storyboarding, and scheduling, ensuring smooth production and minimal delays. One notable technique employed during production was the use of forced perspective to create the illusion of a grander mansion than what actually existed on the back lot. This involved carefully positioning props, actors, and set pieces to create a visual trick, making the set appear larger on camera. Despite the show's comedic nature, the production team took the set design seriously, researching and incorporating authentic elements of Southern architecture and lifestyle into the Clampett's mansion. A combination of innovative techniques, thorough planning, and attention to detail contributed to the show's success and enduring popularity. <laughs> the creation of the musical score and soundtrack for the Beverly Hillbillies, a 1962 TV series, was a crucial aspect of setting the show's lighthearted and humorous tone. The series followed the Clampett family, who struck oil and moved to Beverly Hill, California, bringing their country ways with them. The show's music was composed by Max Steiner, a renowned film composer known for his work on Gone with the Wind and King Kong. Steiner's score for the Beverly Hillbillies was characterized by its use of banjos, fiddles, and other traditional country instruments, which complemented the show's rural themes and humor. The soundtrack also featured popular country 
and Western songs of the time, further emphasizing the show's country roots. The use of music in the Beverly Hillbillies served to enhance the comedic timing of the show's jokes and to provide a sense of familiarity and comfort to the audience. Steiner's approach to composing for the Beverly Hillbillies was to create music that was simple and easy to understand, yet memorable and catchy. He aimed to evoke a sense of nostalgia and warmth, which was in line with the show's themes of family, tradition, and the simple pleasures of rural life. The musicians involved in the creation of the show's music were experienced in playing country and western music, which added to the authenticity of the score. The use of live musicians, rather than synthesized music, gave the show a more organic and natural feel. In summary, the creation of the musical score and soundtrack for the Beverly Hillbillies was a collaborative effort between composer Max Steiner and a team of experienced country and western musicians. The music complemented the narrative and emotional tone of the show, providing a sense of nostalgia, warmth, and humor that resonated with audiences. About my yodeling. So I called him at the bank and I yodeled and he come running over here to see me. One of the most iconic scenes in the Beverly Hillbillies is the opening credit sequence where the Clampett family strikes oil on their land and becomes overnight millionaires. The scene is filled with humor and excitement, capturing the essence of the show's premise. Director Richard Horf uses wide shots to showcase the family's rural surroundings, contrasting with the glamorous Beverly Hills setting they will soon encounter. In this scene, the performance of the actors truly shines. Buddy Epson as Jed Clampett perfectly embodies the down-to-earth, unsophisticated patriarch while Max Baer Jr. as Jethro and Donna Douglas as Ellie may bring their own unique comedic energy to the scene. The actor's expression and physical comedy are on full display, making the scene memorable and endearing to audiences. The cinematography in this scene is also noteworthy. The use of sweeping aerial shots to capture the oil gushing from the ground adds a sense of grandeur and excitement to the scene. The warm color palette and natural lighting further emphasize the family's humble beginnings making their sudden wealth all the more striking. The impact of this scene on the audience is significant. It sets the tone for the entire series, introducing the Clampett family and their fish out of water story in a memorable and entertaining way. The scene has become iconic, encapsulating the show's humor, art, and unique perspective on the American dream. Unfortunately, there are no direct commentaries from the filmmakers or actors regarding this specific scene. However, Buddy Epson was known for praising the show's writing and the cast chemistry, which is evident in this scene. The show's enduring popularity and cultural impact are a testament to the talent and creativity of everyone involved in its production. There's a spark in you. That light bulb. Well, uh, she invites him to come and... The Beverly Hillbillies, a 1962 TV series, brought humor and hillbilly culture into the living rooms of Americans, resonating with audiences seeking entertainment during turbulent times. The show revolved around a fish out of water narrative, where a backwoods family struck oil and moved to Beverly Hills, providing a contrast between rural and urban lifestyles. The series influenced pop culture by popularizing catchphrases like, y'all come back now, here, and well, doggies. It also inspired other fish out of water comedies and cemented the hillbilly stereotype in American media. The show's theme song, The Ballad of Jed Clampett, became a hit and remains familiar to this day. The Beverly Hillbillies contributed to discussions on social and cultural themes by highlighting the clash between traditional values and modern consumerism. The show's humor often stemmed from the Clampett family's simple, honest ways contrasting with the materialistic, superficial world of Beverly Hills. This contrast allowed viewers to reflect on their values and the impact of societal changes. Moreover, the series provided a glimpse into hillbilly culture, which was often misunderstood or marginalized. By portraying the Clampets as likable and relatable, the show challenged stereotypes and fostered appreciation for rural traditions. In summary, the Beverly Hillbillies entertained audiences, influenced pop culture, and sparked discussions on social and cultural themes, leaving a lasting impact on American television. Well, that's just it. They didn't. Their police car still out front. Oh, that Eddie. Oh, I hope he's not gone. The Beverly Hillbillies, a 1962 TV series, received mixed reviews from critics, but was popular among audiences. The show followed the Clampett family as they struck it rich, 
and moved to Beverly Hills, leading to cultural clashes and humorous situations. Critics described the show as cheerfully lowbrow and unabashedly silly, with some praising its harmless fun and slapstick humor. However, others criticized it for its simplistic storylines and stereotypical portrayal of rural Southerners. Despite the mixed critical reception, The Beverly Hillbillies was a massive hit with audiences. It consistently ranked in the top 10 shows of the year and ran for nine seasons, a testament to its popularity with viewers. The show also received a few awards and nominations. It was nominated for several Emmy Awards, including Outstanding Comedy Series, an outstanding performance by an actor in a supporting role in a comedy series for actor Max Baer Jr., who played Jethro Bodine. Receiving nominations and awards for the Beverly Hillbillies was significant for those involved in the show. It not only validated their hard work and talent, but also helped establish their careers in the entertainment industry. The show's success also paved the way for other rural-themed TV shows and movies, demonstrating the enduring appeal of stories about ordinary people and extraordinary circumstances. In conclusion, while the Beverly Hillbillies received mixed reviews from critics, it was a massive hit with audiences and helped launch the careers of several actors and writers. Its few awards and nominations were a testament to its popularity and influence in the entertainment industry. Then you stomp them with spikes. <laughs> no. As Jane says to me, she says... The Beverly Hillbillies, a popular 1962 TV series, had its fair share of memorable moments during production. Buddy Ebsen, who played Jed Clampett, was known for his dry wit. In one scene, he accidentally mispronounced the word Vittles as Vittles. Instead of reshooting the scene, the producers decided to keep it, turning it into a beloved blooper. Paul Henning, the creator, was inspired to write the show after a fishing trip in Arkansas. He wanted to create a cultural clash between rural and urban America, which resonated with audiences. Max Bear Jr., who played Jethro, was a talented athlete before becoming an actor. He was a boxer, and even sparred with Muhammad Ali in his early years. The show's theme song, The Ballad of Jed Clampett, was a hit single in 1962. It was sung by Flat and Scruggs, who were already established bluegrass musicians. The catchy tune became synonymous with the show and is still recognized today. Behind the scenes, the cast often improvised their lines, leading to many unscripted moments. For instance, Nancy Culp, who played Miss Jane Hathaway, often ad-libbed her lines, adding to the show's comedic charm. Despite the show's light-hearted nature, the cast and crew worked diligently to maintain its high production standards. The show set, which replicated a mansion in Beverly Hills, was meticulously designed and became a popular tourist attraction during filming. In conclusion, The Beverly Hillbillies was a groundbreaking TV series that brought rural America into the living rooms of urban audiences. Its behind-the-scenes anecdotes reveal a hard-working cast and crew who created a show that has endured for generations. Van Rensselaer. Marty, Marty. Oh, yes, <laughs> Marty. Well, the Clampets won't be able to have dinner with us on your yacht. Well, why not? The Beverly Hillbillies, a 1962 TV series, holds a significant place in film history due to its unique blend of comedy and social commentary. It depicted the culture clash between the rural and urban worlds, which resonated with audiences and became a popular theme in later productions. The show's impact on future filmmaking is evident in the numerous spin-offs, remakes, and adaptations it inspired. For instance, the concept of fish out of water characters navigating a new environment has been revisited in various productions, such as the hit movie Green Acres and the TV show The Nanny. Moreover, the Beverly Hillbillies paved the way for other rural-themed shows and movies, highlighting the importance of representing diverse experiences and backgrounds in media. It also showcased the talents of its cast, particularly Buddy Ebsen, who became a household name and went on to star in other successful productions. In addition, the show's theme song, The Ballad of Jed Clampett, became a cultural phenomenon and is still recognized today. The catchy tune and memorable lyrics have been covered by various artists and continue to entertain audiences. Overall, the Beverly Hillbillies left a lasting legacy in film history by breaking new ground in comedy and social commentary, inspiring future filmmakers, and creating a cultural touchstone that continues to resonate with audiences today. You know, I'm Rose Ellen. 
That's the truth. And I'm driving in an automobile in city traffic. But all them... Did you enjoy watching the Beverly Hillbillies TV series from 1962? We'd love to hear about your experiences and memories related to this classic show. How did it make you feel? And what did it mean to you personally? Perhaps you were inspired by the humor and the portrayal of the Clampett family, or maybe you found yourself relating to their struggles as they adjusted to a new lifestyle. Whatever your connection to the show, we'd love to hear from you. By sharing your story and memories, you can help keep the legacy of the Beverly Hillbillies alive and inspire others to discover this beloved piece of television history. So don't be shy, we encourage you to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more explorations of classic cinema. Let's start a conversation and celebrate the impact that the Beverly Hillbillies had on us all. And I might. <laughs> As my housekeeper, I will be paying you.